So I had to put on my Windows XP Windows Ugly sweater for this because the naming scheme of CPUs are getting ridiculous. Like I just imagine a normal consumer going into a store and they see Intel Core Ultra 7155H. What does that mean, right? i7 13th 9 Gen 259, 45 watts. What does that even mean? AMD RX 259 7080U CPU. What does that mean? Like, it's just so confusing and convoluted for the general consumer that I think they do it on purpose just to confuse people. They need to make it simple. I know Apple's may not be the best example, but M1, M2, M3 is so much easier to understand than the naming schemes we have going on on the Windows side. Now, before I even talk about this Asus ZenBook 14, which is using a Meteor Lake processor, things have changed. The P-Series from last year's CPUs are no longer a thing. It's gone. This year, we only have UH and HX. The U and H CPUs are all under Meteor Lake now. It's using the Intel 4 architecture. The U series start around 15 watts for base power. And then the H series start at 28 watts for base power. And those can go all the way up to 45 watts of base power. Now, if you want the most powerful CPUs, which are not even announced yet, those are the HX CPUs, but they're not Meteor Lake. It's Raptor Lake, 14th gen CPUs. The same idea and concept as the desktop. So you're still gonna get i7-14700HX, i9-14900HX, the list goes on. But look, there are some improvements here. For one, the core structure is a bit different. So you have six performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and new this time, two low efficiency, efficiency cores, plus a dedicated MPU. And there are some benefits to this. Like for one, I saw a drop in single core clock speed. It's not a big deal for most people, but they're taking more of an AMD approach, focusing on the multi-core while taking a little bit of a hit in the single core. In fact, you can see this, even last year's U and P series processors performed better than the Meteor Lake processor in the ZenBook 14. Multi-core is a totally different story. The Slim 5 may come out on top, but that's using an HS processor that's running at 35 watts, which is obviously more power than the 28 watt CPU inside of here. But honestly, what does this all mean? Like, what does this translate when it comes to actual performance? Well, if you're using Photoshop or even any sort of video application, your MacBooks are gonna perform the best. Like the M3 processor just dominated all of these computers with the highest score out of the bunch. Don't get me wrong, this new ZenBook 14 with its Intel Meteor Lake processor did really well, like much better than the U series and P series before it. But the one area that I had a bit of an issue with was Premiere Pro. I tried rendering a file with this Meteor Lake processor and I have another one here too to kind of like make sure I'm just not crazy. It couldn't do it, it would crash. Same with the other laptop I had here, it would crash. I tried running Puget Bench Premiere Pro, it would crash. Now I'm not saying this is a bad CPU or a bad laptop, I feel like it's just not optimized yet, or Adobe hasn't updated their software to incorporate this new architecture. But the story generally holds true. MacBooks, M3, perform better in Photoshop and Premiere Pro. In second place is gonna be an Intel processor because even before it did crash, the render times looked to be faster than the U-Series 7000 processor from AMD that I tested out in the framework. Developers will still find that the MacBook Pro with M3 performs the best, but the performance on these guys have been improved. Again, I don't think it's running as efficient as it should because even processors from last year beat out this new Meteor Lake processor inside of the ZenBook 14. Like the Acer Swift Go, which I have outside, did it in about 31 minutes. This did it in 39 minutes, which I feel like is a bit too high. So I feel like there's some optimization that needs to be done to these cores. But the one area that really blew me away was the integrated GPU. That's probably the biggest update with these Meteor Lake processors. The integrated GPU is double the speed of the Iris XE. In fact, it's neck and neck with AMD's RX 7800M. Sometimes it's faster, other times it's like right in line, but it's such a big difference. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you see gaming handhelds coming out in 2024 using the Intel Arc architecture because the performance is actually really good. But when I played Overwatch, it was weird. Like, it was very weird. Like, I would get low frame rates, like in the 30s and 40s, and then after 10 minutes of playing, it would just 
shoot up to 70 frames per second, sometimes touching 100 frames per second, with the settings set to medium and the resolution at 1920 by 1200. But look, battery life is better. You know, not by much. You know, like I couldn't get my battery life tests to work on this because again, it would crash or just shut down. But I did test out the Acer Swift Go and I got about 13 hours and 19 minutes before needing to charge. I did do some more real life battery testing on this, like using the computer normally. If I was to push this thing super hard and like run Photoshop and edit on this, I would probably drain the battery and like three to four hours. If I was just doing more productivity focused stuff, I could probably push this thing six to seven hours before needing to charge. Now, if you're actually interested in this laptop, it's a beautiful looking product. You know, this is the ASUS ZenBook 14. It has a beautiful pattern on the top. It does get a lot of fingerprints. Like I'm touching it right now and you can see the fingerprints forming. Pretty good lid flex. It only weighs about 2.6 pounds, 14.9 millimeters thin. Like this is a very light laptop. The good news though is you do get a good amount of IO with your USB 3.2 port on the left hand side. And then on the right, you have your HDMI port 2.1, audio jack and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. This does have an ergo hinge, which means when you open it up, the bottom lifts up so you get better airflow. It also gives you a better angle to type on, which I personally feel is a much better typing experience. The hinge goes all the way back 180 degrees. So you can always lie this flat on a table or stick it under a monitor when you're at the office and use a bigger display. I really dig this keyboard. You know, it's a little mushy. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a little bit of mush to it, but there's a good amount of click at the same time. Like, it's like a, a love-hate relationship, but overall, a very good typing experience. The buttons are a little flat for the arrow keys. You do have a brand new Intel Evo Edition sticker, which we'll talk about in another video. And then you have a fairly big touchpad. Like, this is a glass touchpad, and it's very accurate, very enjoyable to use. Now, the display is obviously one of the best things about this laptop. It's a 2800 by 1800 resolution. It's OLED. It has a variable refresh rate. It can dynamically switch between 120 and 60, which is good because if you're on battery, you want it to do it automatically so you get better battery life. It is touch, so you can go ahead and manipulate the screen if you really want to. The screen brightness is okay. It's under 400 nits, but the color gamut is good and so is the color accuracy. Now, the other big update with these Meteor Lake processors is AI. And I put AI in quotes because there's just not a lot of AI going on right now. Most of the AI stuff comes down to basic things like the webcam, you know, blurring out the background, doing auto framing, you know, little things like that. There are some AI features being incorporated into some applications like Lightroom, for example, is gonna get AI denoising, but overall it's a very minor thing at the moment. But as time goes on, hopefully more applications will include it. The one thing that's supposed to be really good is AI for the microphone. So I did a couple of tests. You guys let me know how it sounds. Right now you're listening to the microphone on the ZenBook. This is a 1080p camera. I do have auto framing on. This is one of the AI features that come standard now with Meteor Lake. But most importantly, let me know how the audio sounds because the next test, I'm gonna put a blow dryer in the background and see if it does a good job of removing the background noise. Right now I have a blow dryer literally one arm's length away. Like it is really loud in my left ear. So. You're probably gonna hear it, but it should be very, very low. So you guys let me know how it sounds and if the microphones are doing a good job. Now I imagine most people buying a thin notebook like this or just buying it for productivity to browse the net, maybe play the odd old game. But if you're one of those maniacs that buy thin notebooks to push the CPU to its full capacity, then you're probably still better with an AMD laptop. I found that the sustained average core clock speed was significantly higher under the same load compared to the Core Ultra 7 155H that's inside of here. The good news though is that the temperatures were very similar, but the overall core average clock speeds were higher with the 7000 series. As for the internals, there's not much going on. You have a big 75 watt hour battery, and then of course you have one fan with a thick copper heat pipe. I feel like because this is running at 28 watts, this would benefit from another heat pipe with a fan. I feel like you would get much better performance, but this is what they could squeeze inside of here. RAM is soldered on and the only thing that is upgradable is the NVMe SSD. If you wanna put a bigger drive in here, you obviously have that option. 
Also, which I totally forgot to mention, uh, performance on battery is almost just as good as being plugged into the wall. So you're not gonna take a huge nerf if you unplug it and use your laptop, which is really cool to see. Like I did a Cinebench test on both plugged in and not plugged in, and it was like identical. Same holds true with the GPU. The only time there's a bit of a nerf is if you're using both the CPU and GPU at the same time, you will take a little bit of a hit, but it's not nearly as drastic as previous generations. Look, I like the ZenBook 14. I think Meteor Lake is going in the right direction. I just think it needs a little bit more fine tuning, you know? Everything needs to be optimized a little bit better before we can see it really flourish. Is it the best CPU right now? It's hard to say, AMD has to introduce their 8000 series. Either way, I have more Meteor Lake CPUs coming into the office. If you're interested in this laptop, I'll place a link in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.